understand after 30 minutes the questions if you have any questions that you wanted to ask take uh, your paper the number to dial is 614-577-1464 again it's 614-577-1464 and it is also Samson Alote for your wonderful word that you are doing. And may the Lord also bless anybody, any listener, and those who even couldn't listen today, may the Lord bless you equally. As uh, as uh, Brother Samson did the introduction, my name is uh, Reverend Francis Asenso of Redeemer Assemblies of God Church in Columbus, Ohio, as simply Assembly, Redeemer Assembly of God Church. May the Lord bless you for listening. Like today, I know that our life will never be the same. And I hope that uh, we are going to uh, change according to the word that is coming on. Uh, may we just uh, be silent for a moment of prayer as I lead into a time of a minute of prayer. Father, may your name be glorified. We bless the holy name. You give all the glory and adoration. We bless you, Father, who did yesterday what you are doing presently in our lives, what you will be doing tomorrow. Lord, we thank you and we appreciate your presence. We commit anything we are doing to the Lord onto your hands. For there is nothing that will be possible in our lives if we acknowledge you and therefore pray and commit what we are doing to your hands. Blessed be Banley. And let it have impact on the listeners and myself and everybody in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, use me as never before. I am just an empty vessel. I don't have my own way. But direct me where you want me to go. Lord, at the end of the day, I will be very careful and render on you thanksgiving. Thank you. I bless you. I give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And today we'll be looking at uh, the, uh, the same revelation. If you have your Bible, you can turn with me to the book of Revelation, chapter 2. Remember those who listened to me yes, uh, last week, and we did the church of Ephesus, where there were wonderful men around, wonderful saints, wonderful Christians, in the city of Ephesus, who lived and had a patient, and they were able to cast evil. But at the same time, they all had a, 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 a blemish or a problem with them. Their problem wasn't so much that we were taken out, but they lost their first love. Hallelujah. They lost their first love. But today, we are going to see the church in Simna. The church is now. So we will be reading from uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse number 8, up to verse number 11. So if you have your Bible with you, please open to that chapter of Revelation 2, verse 8. Uh, we will be reading through uh, verse number 11. And uh, when it comes to uh, question and answers to the finish of my preaching. You don't need to ask the questions, you can contribute, you can ask and ask something because it is the word of God, it is open for any discussion. May the Lord bless you and stay blessed as you are going to listen to the word of God. 
as usual, I always use the King James version of the Bible. So I will be reading from uh, King James Bible. Now, verse number eight of chapter two of Revelation says, and unto the angels of the church in Simna write, this is the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Remember, this is the word of God that came to John in Patmos. So these things say the first and the last is referring to Jesus Christ himself. He is the first and the last, and which was dead and alive. Nobody was dead and alive except our precious, wonderful Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Verse number nine, I know that works and tribulation and poverty, but they are rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast out into prison, and he may be tried, and he shall have tribulation in it. He shall fear unto death, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the church. He that overcometh shall be head of the second death. May the Lord bless you. That ends our verses. Now, we could see that in the church of Sina, the Lord has never seen anything that is not of him. He has never seen any negative. It is always obvious that Christians will be fallen somewhere. As we saw in the book of uh, in the church of Ephesus, that they lost their first love for God. But today you will see that whatever you are doing, God Almighty is going to congratulate you. Hallelujah. So today I want to deliver a simple message entitled The Crown of Life. The crown of life. In its simplicity, it is a synonymous of heaven. Hallelujah. So you see that everything that you are doing, that you are going through, people may not see you. The pastor may not see you. You are all in circle may not see you. But remember, none of these people have sent you. None of these people have called you. The, 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 center, the person who called you is our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So he's telling you today, as a member of as a member of the Christian, you have devoted yourself to lost a certain branch with you. So he's going to give you a crown of life. Brothers, whatever we are doing, our to and fro in the church, our to and fro worshiping Christ, it pays. There is a reward that the Lord is going to give us. Hallelujah. So, as I'm speaking, I wish you be part of this church. Remember, you yourself, you are, you, are, you are a church, but I want you to bear the qualities of the members of the church of Simina. The Lord did not see anything. Unlike the Ephesus, that he saw that they were their first love. But this church, God has never seen anything with them. So, he says, he's going to give them the crown of life. But before he give them the crown of life, let me see what he's saying. He said, I know how your works are. I know how devoted your works are. And I know the tribulation and poverty that you are going through. But listen to me. You see, Christianity is not always sugar candy. The politics are always good. But we can never ignore tribulation and be a perfect Christian. So the Lord is saying that all things that you are going through, look, your tribulation will never be like somebody maybe beheading you. It's in the church against life. People talking against you because you have devoted yourself and you are close to the person. You are close to the person. And because of your service to Christ, people are against you. It will be your tribulation. And you see yourself as you ignore so many things, so you see yourself as poor. 
So the Lord said, I know your ways. One, about your tribulation, things that you are going through, the difficulties that you are encountering in life as a Christian. And poverty. But God says, even though people see you as poor, but you are rich. But they are rich. And I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Jews. Let's not focus ourselves into the, the Jewish community. The Jews may be a synonymous of Christians in the church. Hallelujah. Because the synagogue at that time was full of Jews. So God is telling you that. I know the blasphemy of them who say they are Christians, but they are so sisters, you could say that the church of God, not everybody in that church, in the church of God are Christians. You do practical theology, you will see that evangelism actually starts from the church. If you want to do evangelism, it starts from the church. Hallelujah. People may be there, but they are not actually born again. So he's saying you have seen those blasphemy against your life. Those who walk alongside with you and they are proclaiming and they are behaving like they are Christians. But they are not. They are proclaiming like they are Jews. The Bible said they are not because they are blaspheming against you. Brothers and sisters, listeners, I want to encourage you that no matter how you are going through in the church, no matter what tribulation you are going through, brothers and sisters, there are so many things in life you can never ignore. Tribulation in the church will come unto you. Tribulation outside the church will come unto you. There will be a demonic attack in your life. My God says, I know them all. So he said, listen, fear none of those things with that shall Why? Those tribulation and the blasphemy against your, 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 your God. Jesus is telling you today, fear none of those things. Why? Because he's under control. He was Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, the first and the last, the dead and alive. Hallelujah. The Omega, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginner and the ender, our wonderful counselor, Jesus Christ, is under control of your life. He is the altar of life. So when Christ said, do not just go there, fear none of those things who does suffer. He's telling you, ignore those who are blaspheming you. Ignore the tribulations you go through. For I, the Lord, am in control of your life. So behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prisons, that you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, he, he goes to the Senate because you are a serviceable guy. Because you are a serviceable saint. Because of your devotion, you are devoted everything of your spirit, your soul, and your body into the hands of the living God that I will service you. As Joshua said, my family and I, we will service God. Moment you make that commitment, inner commitment, and probably that comes out of your mouth through you, through your practical things that you do, people are going to cast out, cast you out into prison. It might not be the normal prison that we are in, but people are going to you are going to be confined and you are going to be lonely. You will be in the midst of con a big congregation, but see, you feel loneliness. Loneliness is not you being uh, alone, no. Loneliness, you feel in, in loneliness, it means you can be in the midst of millions of people and you feel lonely. That might be your prison here. That might be your prison. But the prison here also can be an analogy of difficulties that we are going through. And it could be an actual prison also. But all what God is saying is this. Those things will come. But he shall have that tribulation just 10 days. Hallelujah. Just 10 days. The 10 days here is not actually uh, saying 1 up to 10. But it means a limited time. Hallelujah. 
a limited time. You see, the church in Simna, the whom Christ was suffering through suffering. The Lord of the Christmas, hallelujah, was engaged in stranda and resorted, uh, resorted in church members being jailed for a short time during those days. Because nobody wanted them to, to be uh, nobody appreciated their country in worshiping our Lord. So they were put in prison. But what would be a prison today? The prison may be uh, in a different way. The prison may be in a different way. As the prison may be loaded. The prison may be not even talking to you because they think you know too much. You have to get your new you Cry Jesus says it will be just about 10 days. Be bold and worship him. Continue in your service. Don't let anything sway you. Don't let anything confuse you. Don't let any breastfeeding confuse you. Don't let any difficulty suffering confuse you. Negative spoken word confused because God says I refuse them all and they will never affect your life. The crown of life is coming onto your way. So it's important us to be faithful unto death. And he is going to give us crown of life. You see, what we is not a problem, but where we will end. It's like church friends. When you plant a church, whatever you are going through doesn't matter. But where you are going to end? In the beginning of a third plan, we did say some, some churches can blossom. They can attract so many uh, people. But the end is what is needed. And there are some people that plant churches and they struggle and struggle and struggle. So that it gives us the matter by the ending. Why do I say this? Because Jesus Christ is sending, telling us in the context of the church of seminar, of which, of course, you are part of this church, that God be faithful unto death and will give thee a crown of life. They have already started doing the good work, but Christ is telling them be faithful unto death. That means there, there, there might be uh, some people that are going to withdraw in the face of difficulties. There might be people who would say, I am now tired, I am fed up because of the tribulation they are going through. They could never make it. Let's remember the virgins, the ten virgins. They all started away. Going to meet the bridegroom. We saw them as a perfect Not knowing that five men, not a fast way. Going to the same location, 10 people, 10 virgins, but five became uh, uh, accepted and five were rejected. Because they were they were not somewhere along the line. We may refuse to worship God. Somewhere along the line, we may say we are fed up about, about the blasphemy. People are talking about us too much. And somewhere along the line, you are going to say the pastor has done this, the pastor has done this. I am leaving, I won't even worship again. Brothers and sisters, whatever you are hearing in the church, that seems not to be good before thee are part of the tribulation. People, the pastor even doesn't appreciate you, but remember, he hasn't called you. Pastors see only the physical things, but our Lord Jesus Christ see the innermost part of human being, of which, of course, we are ignorance of sin. So do not let your heart be troubled about things that you are going through. Continue and render your service unto Christ. For he holds the key of heaven. And he says, he's coming soon. He's coming soon and give you a crown of life. He's coming soon. 
eternal glory is yours. Christ Almighty God is going to welcome you and give you a crown that no one has ever crowned you before. But he is encouraging you that those who will be faithful to the death uh, unto death, I will give thee a crown of life. Why can we waste our time in the church? How can we devote our time in the church? How can we be serviceable to the Lord? And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when Christ is coming is in his glory, and he is coming soon too, and we will be left behind. This is what Christ is saying. He is holding a crown of life. There is a reward Christ is coming to give unto you. Christ hasn't seen anything wrong with you. All what you're seeing are people are blaspheming. People are uh, saying negative things about your life because of your because you're a serviceable guy. Woman of God listening, man of God listening, the saint listening. I want you to continue your service to Christ, irrespective of what will come. Hallelujah. Sometimes those things that comes onto our life comes to uh, to polish us as we learn from the king uh, the, the book of james chapter one that perfect has something to do patient has something to do in our lives so be patient in life be patient in what we're going through you are going through those because of yourself but because you follow christ our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who we have accepted, he didn't get it in a silver platter. A person who I never seen before. The Sahedrin, the leaders of the Sahedrin, uh, the, the, the Jewish leaders, decided and they, 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 they tried and orchestrated a crime that our Lord has never committed before. And these people sent him, We are you and I, we sent him into the cross. And Satan thought he was going to uh, uh, overcome Christ and uh, handle the word as he wants. But our Lord that turns things unto the benefit of the saints. Because of the cross of Calvary, I and you, we are here. So therefore you are also going to go through so many things in the church. Remember, any service to the church is to Christ, not to any human being. But you have started a good thing. The book of Ephesians. That's the Christ who started a good thing with you. Chapter 1, verse number 6. You will see to it completion before the day Christ Jesus Christ comes. So Christ is always ready to take you from the first point to the end. So but it is dependent on you whether you are going to continue following him. Are you going to reject Christ because of what people are saying to you? Are you going to reject Christ because and now you don't have money? It say people, you are passing through tribulation and poverty, but that are rich. Who is richer than somebody who is going to be given a crown of life? No one. That is why the Bible say, if we get the whole world for our procession and we, and we lost our souls, what benefit would, uh, are we? So people see you as poor because you have neglected the overtime. You have de de devoted your time to the worship of Christ. Where people go, you don't go there. But Christ is telling you that you are rich. Why? Because nothing can buy eternity. Nothing can buy a crown of life. But Christ says, I am coming and I am holding the crown of life and I am going to give unto you. Today, I am encouraging each person, anybody who is listening, who will be listening. If you want to serve with God, it might not be easy. Christianity is not sugar candy. Sometimes there are bitter pills we have to swallow. That is what God is telling this in chapter 2 of Revelation, that tribulation and blasphemy, they are all bitter pills. But remember, incurable diseases that can never go could be healed to bitter pills so therefore those simulations that you are going through it is a medication unto our lives 
It is complete medication unto us. You just focus. Worship God. We've gone through so many things. We didn't desert our Christ. A fraud. The pastor can give you. What friends can you? What parents can give you? They can never offer you a crown of life. This could be offered by our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm encouraging you, saints of God. I'm encouraging you, uh, brothers and sisters. I am encouraging you, perfect Christian. I'm encouraging you, a uh, woman of God. I'm encouraging you, pastors alike, the evangelists, and everybody. Especially if you're a pastor and you want to do the right thing. You face those kinds of things. Unless maybe you compromise. They have something called what are your church? That means you don't say you don't say sin in the church, and your church will be flourishing. Hallelujah. By the end of the day, the person who chose us, Christ who appointed us, we will go before him, and we are going to be accountable before him. By the grace of God, I may leave you here. And we will be waiting for your contribution as the MC said, Brother Sam said, you, just, you, just, you can call in 614-577-1464, contribute, ask questions, and whatever question you have, we will be able through the Spirit of God answer you. He here, let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches he that overcome shall not be head of the second death verse number 11 second death is what a term hell. second death is what a term hell because our first death is a physical death from this planet earth and the second death is hell so christ is saying if you actually continue to hear what my servant francis is saying my word that is proclaiming unto you you will be you escape the second death you escape hell and when you escape hell that means you are going to heaven brothers and sisters may the lord bless you for listening we thank you we bless you jesus christ amen Amen, amen, amen. The voice that you just heard on the Holy Hills radio is Reverend Francis Kwame Asensu from the Redeemer Church of God on the east side of Columbus. Uh, he did touch on the topic of uh, the crown of life, uh, which Jesus Christ is coming soon. Uh, we are about to take a five minute break, uh, but before we do that, the number to call to and to contribute is 614-577-1464. Again, it's 614-577-1464. And we'll take a five-minute break. Thank you. For example, you say, uh, if I'm lying, let... Uh Holy House Radio. Sundays, about 8:30 p.m. Eastern Time. Omodian Holy House Radio. Because <laughs> Across the mountain, I'm out of here. It's a good time.
Dear <laughs> the voice of revival where we will be preparing the way of the lord we'll be inspiring people in the area of prayer talking about revival how we can be used by god to bring regional transformation we'll be talking about spiritual matters that is key to your victorious living again it is the voice of revival every saturday from 4 p.m to 5 p.m eastern time and as you log on to this station you can also get it on this number 610-400-0277 we are preparing the way of the lord jesus is coming soon and you and i have to get ready to meet him in the sky but before we do god has something for you to do on the earth so join me saturdays your host alfred table voice of revival on this station every saturday 4 to 5 p.m god bless you Back to the Holy Hills Radio. Uh, we are here with Reverend Francis Wabi Asensu from Redeemer Assemblies of God Church on the east side, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, if any of you is looking for a church to go to, uh, I will recommend this church to you. The address to the church is 2236 South Hamilton Road, Columbus, Ohio, 4323. Two. Again, it's 2236, Columbus, Ohio, 43232. You can also find Reverend.
Francis Kwame Asensio on Facebook. You can add him on Facebook and you can send your questions, any contribution about the church or about anything that he talks about. You can also find him on Facebook and add him on Facebook. Amen. And uh, we are back again. We are back again with Reverend Francis Kwame Asensio. And we are still taking questions and contribution. The number to dial is 614 Five seven seven one four six four. Pastor, the first question that I will ask to the panel and to the people and to you uh -huh. uh, is: um, It says that Jesus said, or God is saying to John, that yes, He sees the affliction of the people. He sees the suffering that the people are going, and He sees the poverty that these people have on them. And He and He continued to say, yet. You are rich. What does it mean when he said, yet you are rich, Pastor? Uh, thank you for this intelligent question. Yeah. You see, uh, you see, he knows their works or our works, tribulation and the poverty. But yet they are rich. Let's see where Christ says, if we get the whole world in our possession and we lose our soul what do we gain and he goes on to say that you are the salt if the salt loses its saltness what is the use of it it is thrown away and men trodden upon it so what he is saying is this because of things that we are going through in the church, the tribulation and the suffering, we may see ourselves that we are poor. Be poor in the sense that wherever people want to go, you may not even be able to go there. But she's telling you that you are rich. So therefore, in order for me to answer your question directly is this. When you descend, you come down to the verses you are rich in is in uh, verse 9 when you come down to 10 he says i will give thee a crown of life hallelujah so those who are having the whole world into their lives and when they lose their soul that means the crown of life they can they, they can never get the crown of life so they saw themselves as rich people but they were poor but we that see ourselves as poor people, we will be rich because there is nothing on earth that can buy the crown of life. That is why he says we are rich. Our rich will never be perceived by a human being. Our riches can never be, uh, be seen by a human being. But it might be a physical, a spiritual richness. Because at least when we die today, when we die tomorrow, when we die next week, we have a crown of life. We are going to uh, 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 heaven. And on this earth, nothing, nothing can buy heaven. That is why he said we are rich. We are rich. Because, look, and in the, another way, the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord make rich, and he add no sorrow unto it. In other words, I can also explain it in the physical riches. He is not talking about the uh, uh, how plenty our money is, but he's talking about the blessedness, the blessing in what we have. We are contending, we are con contending to the little that we have, but there is so much blessing in it that it will do things that those who have the more riches that people see them people admire them can never even do but here he's telling us that we are rich because there will be a crown of life which money can never buy so if you can gain a crown of life which money can never buy then who is more richer than you no one is richer than you so christians 
All what I can say is, no matter what difficulties we are going through, we may see ourselves like we are poor. We may see ourselves like we are, we are suffering, but we are rich. That is what I said. Some suffering and tribulation are all bitter pills, and bitter pills also heals incurable or chronic diseases. So this thing, that pills of tribulation that we are swallowing, is going to produce, uh, a, 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 or is a product of uh, the kind of life. So we are rich because tomorrow, when we are not on planet Earth, we will be in heaven. Thank you. Amen. 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 So we are rich. We are rich. It's not by just physical uh, physical richness, but spiritual with uh, uh, spiritual richness. Amen. Amen. And uh, when we, when we continue to look at this Revelation chapter two, from verse eight to eleven. Uh, we can, Pastor, we can find out that um, there's so many things that we can relate to our life. And sometimes we ask God that, why me? Why me? Why must I go through this suffering to get this crown? Why is the suffering very important? I know you touched a bit a little bit, but why is suffering or why go through persecution? Uh, when you read the verse 10, for 10 days and faithfully, and uh, once you have been, once you have been faithful to the point of death, that he will give you the life of crown or the crown of life. Why, why is, why must we endure? Uh, because if we serve a living God, why can he not just come the first day and just rescue us? Why can he not just come the moment that afflictions and everything starts? But why must he wait? 10 days. Many people can be more than 10 days. Some of us can be less than 10 days. But this is something that anybody can, can sit down and ask. Why must we sit there and just go through this tribulation to get this crown of life? But, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. You see, it's like uh, I can explain it in this way. When we say human being, Human being comprise the head, and even the head, we have two eyes, nose. When we come down, we have the neck, we have both two hands, and even the hands, we see fingers, we have legs and everything. This makes us human being. What about our inside? There are the intestines over there. It makes us complete as a human being. The analogy I want to draw is this. So as a human being, we are complete now. We can never take out our hand from our body and at the same time want us to be fully human being. Or we can never take off our nose and still we, we are expecting to be fully human being. The point is this, that's how the Bible also is. The Bible is a Bible. The Bible comprises left and the right. Remember the book of uh, Hebrew chapter, I think chapter four, verse 12. It said the word of God is two-edged sword. Hallelujah. So as human beings, we can never cut off our head and become a complete human being. We can never simulation and, uh, and make the Bible complete. That is how the Bible is established. And the Lord said, this book of uh, Revelation, said, this book is closed. We wish we can take off uh, those that looks negative. But let me tell you, human beings are so much, are so much complicated <laughs> that when we don't, sometimes we face those things for us to go closer to the Lord. I could remember, I know so many people when even you prophesy in their life that they, 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 will, they will be rich, they will be prosperous. About, 50, about 70 of these people sit aloof without praying. Maybe they, they, were, pray, they, they, they were prayer people last, uh, yesterday, but so far as somebody has promised, they prophesy in their life that they're going to get money, they cease, they cease. Or the person ceases to pray. You see how it is? So the negative aspect of which, of course, I determine as the tribulation, 
and the positive aspect of which, of course, are termed it as not suffering, are all coming together to make the Bible a complete, and it makes us also complete. And the Bible says, so far as we follow Christ, we must suffer for his sake. So those things we can never take it out, as we can never take the hand out from the body to make ourselves be complete, take our nose from the body to make ourselves be complete, take our intestine inside, those things we can never see to make ourselves be complete. Unfortunately, they are all, of course, not possible. The same thing to the word of God. We can never take up the negative aspect of, of, of what we seem to be negative. Aspect of the Bible and make the Bible complete. So the Bible is both left and the right. If I'm making sense. And these things, when we even go to the book of, let me see, the book of James, we can see something there. We can see something in the book of James and see how, look, suffering is not easy to embrace. I must be frank. Sometimes even the, we, the ministers, sometimes we want to run away and leave the congregation. It is not easy to embrace. But there is a purpose of suffering. But not until there is a hidden purpose of every suffering we go through. But not until the, the, the pain is gone. Then, then the, 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 uh, its purpose is realized. If the pain is still there, we can never uh, realize its purpose. But still, there is, a, there is a hidden purpose. Let's take our Lord Jesus Christ as He is the Lord. He created heaven and earth. Why should He go through that agonizing agony? How does he, how, how? He could have even breathed and all the people could have vanished. But it was not going to make the word complete. He embodied the goodness and the and the and the, and the negative Bible complete. So far as there is left and the right, and so far as there is a spirit of God and there is a spirit of Satan, we will never get everything straight as we want. I am telling you, most of us are sure that 90%, even if our prayer that we are praying today is just 90% will may not even go to church. So, Bible says, less is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. The book of James chapter 1, verse 4. You see, so, so in order for us to crown, crown of uh, life, those temptations we have to go through. I always tell church members, and even actually, if you are a, if, if a devotee, you, 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 you think you're never going to do something, then you haven't come yet. A military expression, you haven't come yet. That means that you have to check your foundation. You are compromising. Because it's a part and parcel of the Bible. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, you are. Go ahead. Uh, amen, amen. Um, also, understand these people of God and the, our life business that uh, nobody ever receive a crown if you haven't been through anything. A boxer has to fight in the ring in order for him to be crowned a champion. Good. Uh, there's a couple of things that we have to go through in order for you to receive a crown. Even in the ancient Greek, they, they wrestle and then when they are done, they get the crown of victory. So when it comes to this crown of life, yes, and these battles that we have to fight. And know that the victory has been already been won because the face that the battle is not yours, it is I, the Lord, that it belongs to. So know that the battle has been already been won for you. All you have to do is just bring it and do it. Amen. To call to question is 614 Again, this is Reverend, Reverend Francis Kwame, assistant from the Redeemer Church of uh, from Redeemer Assemblies of God Church from the East at Columbus. You can add, you can find him on Facebook, add him on Facebook, send him questions, and the church address. If you're looking for a church to go to or a church to visit, the address to the church is 2236 South Hamilton Road, Columbus, Ohio, 43232. We are the only you can subscribe to their radio on our, on YouTube. 
um, by going to Beppo Cron Cron on YouTube and subscribe to it. Um, final, do you, uh, Pastor, do you have any final uh, contribution or anything that you wanted to add uh, before we call that, Pastor? Yeah, what I'm going to say, what I'm saying, the Bible says in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 17, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us far more exceedingly and internal which was brought. Whatever we are going through is not a it is just a, 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 for a moment of time. A, 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 what we read from the revelation, revelation says 10 days, but I am literally uh, giving a meaning as 10 days, but it is a limited time. And here, Christians is all telling us that but for a moment. And what for us, far more exceedingly an internal weight of glory. So whatever we are going through, whatever we are going through, the difference you are going through should be because you are a seven person, because you have put into your life, because you are a Christian. Hallelujah. So if that's what we or you are facing, I am encouraging you, do not be distracted by anything, but you just focus on Christ. Because we can never ignore them. You see that, that, that when we are coming to uh, do wedding or is uh, we, we go and buy golden, golden rings. How do they become gold? How do they become rain? They pass through fire. The Bible also testified that our works will pass through fire. And when they are able to pass through, we are going to get the crown of life. Our affliction is just a moment, and it works far more exceedingly and internal weight of glory. So I'm encouraging each of everyone, each of us all, to continue to worship God. If there is something because of something you are not going to church tomorrow, it is not a choice that we have to make. We must attend church. We must meet together. Whatever somebody is holding on to you, or whatever you are holding on to anybody because of uh, uh, things that they have done to you, leave it aside. God says, remember where we read, he said, have seen your works. He knows what you're going through. That tribulation is not something God have never seen or perceived. He has seen. Things that your ministers and your pastors and your church and you and the inner circle will never have even seen. God says you have seen them. So continue to worship him. There is a benefit. There is a benefit that no one can offer, a crown of life. When you die today, you are going to heaven. May the Lord bless you all. And next week, if Jesus Christ hasn't come, we will meet again. But all what I'm saying is this. If you are a listener and you have never given yourself to Christ, I want to invite you to Christ. Say this thing after me. My Lord Jesus Christ, I have accepted you as my personal Savior. I have accepted you as my Lord and personal Savior. Dwell in me. Dwell in me. Take me. I know that my sins have been forgiven. I know that my sins are forgiven. And I know that the wages of sin is death. And I know the wages of sin is death. And I know that when I was yet a sinner. And I know that yet when I was a sinner. You died on the cross of Calvary for me. You died on the cross of Calvary for me. Jesus. Jesus. I surrender all. I surrender all. You will be my God. You will be my God. My Lord. Lord, and my savior, my savior, from today, from today, onwards, onwards, amen, amen, brothers and sisters. If you said this after me, that means you are born again. Go ahead, amen. Thank you so much. Once again, we'll be back here next week, uh, on next week, Saturday, 12 30 p.m. Eastern Time. At to 1 30 p.m. Eastern Time on the Holy Hills Radio with Reverend Francis Kwame, I you on the Holy Hills Radio. 
Uh, remember, you can find him on Facebook, add him on Facebook, send any questions or any contribution, any question you may have on the Bible, anything pertaining to the kingdom of God or anything pertaining to life, you can find him on Facebook and add him. Thank you so much for joining us on Holy Years Radio and see you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, we bless you because you are the God of beginning. We began with you and we are ending with you. Father, we want to give back your glory and your thanksgiving for making a, a successful end. We pray that, Father, we will never deceive ourselves by listening alone, but we will be practical whatever we are hearing. We commit ourselves, our everything onto your hands. Direct us because you, are in, you, you have said that those who bear to the end, to death, that you have a kind of glory. If any of us want to refuse worshiping you because of what we are going through, Father, we pray, energize us. Let's go closer to you even in, in the face of difficulties, in the face of calamities, in the face of tribulation, because the reward is very rewarding. We thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. I commit my wife who is in, who is in Africa also unto thee, Lord. I pray that you bless her exceedingly. We know the wonderful thing that you are doing in her life, the evangelism that she is doing. It is because of your grace, not anything of hers. But I pray for your protection and guidance that you will bring her safely over here and we will continue to grow for you. We bless you. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen.